show, we have Diana Place. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. You did. Great. Um, Diana Dunbar Place, and she is the creator of The the Gift of Your Third Act. And this is a four-part lecture series. Is that a good way to describe it? Yeah. And, and because of the time we're in, it's actually a virtual event series. <laughs> it's sort of more, a little bit more on that. Right. Right, so this is very exciting. So, so Diana, um, let's start by asking you, where did you grow up? I grew up in the South. I grew up in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, which is the capital there. Right. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit different from the Northeast. Just a little. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and when you were growing up, did you ever think that when you grow up one day, you're going to be doing or have done all the things that you've done and are doing? Well, I guess it depends on how old I was when I was growing up. I mean, I mean, I'm in my early 60s now. So when I was really young, I think, I think that, and I love this about the impact of um, your youth, but when I was very young, the things that were important to me then are still important to me now. You know, my values, you know, honesty, integrity, you know, human relationships and things like that. But it really wasn't until I was a little bit older, I would say that I started to, I like to say follow and understand the breadcrumbs that sort of I followed through my 20s and 30s and 40s. Right. Um, they really, you know, in hindsight, my career is, has been focused in, in general, my professional career was focused in marketing and in advertising and things like that. But it really was the things that happened between and on the side of my jobs mm -hmm. that really have led me here. So I really would never have predicted it. It's only in hindsight that I understand it, I guess. Right. Um, it's funny. I interviewed someone who said to me, when I was a kid, I thought I was going to grow up to be a pirate. <laughs> but then she turned out to be an accountant. So... So I always ask that question. Well, I mean, pirates do have to count all their loot, right? So maybe that's, that's it. some accounting in there. That was a hint. Well, if you ask me that question, I would say when I was young, I thought it was going to be an artist. Oh, nice. Very yeah. Good. And, and I still love it. But. That, that does continue. I can, I can see the artistry in which you've created here. Hmm. Well, so. thank, thank you. Um, you spent a long time, um, a successful career, I should say, in marketing. And what was your, what was your favorite part of that? Hmm. I had a lot of favorite parts. Um, I think really, if I was just going to look at it um, in general, I would say it's the fact that I got to deal with a variety of businesses because when you're in the marketing or advertising business, you're consulting and working with a number of different businesses. You're not just in one field. So I got the variety of that. I got a variety of people and I met an extraordinarily wide and diverse group of people, which I found really fascinating. And I also liked the blend of being able to sort of have a little bit of psychology because in marketing, you really need to understand and, and you know, sort of embrace human emotion and behavior. Um, but you also get to have a little bit of creativity, you know, especially in advertising, there's a lot of creativity and you're, but you're in the business. So it's sort of like a blending of psychology, creativity and in business. So I, I think I'm a person of uh, variety. <laughs> I think that's sort of the spice of life for me. Excellent. <laughs> um, and and what, um, what led you to start your business, the third act? Third act quest. Third act quest, yeah. Well, it came to me basically after a period, I, I like to say there was a convergence of three very lightning, uh, deep lightning strike moments in my life. I, all in the same year, I had a cancer diagnosis and treatment, albeit it went well for me, thank goodness. Um, but the cancer diagnosis and treatment, along with preparations for becoming an empty nester, as my daughter was going to college, and at the same time, as the result of a number of influences and, and in the end, my um, illness, 
I lost um, a business partnership and a business that I'd been working blood, sweat and tears on for about four years. And so in that moment, I realized, and as I looked back, as much as I loved my business career, I had been spending most of my life fueling other people's passions, as I like to say, not my own. Um, and I think that comes to a lot of people in their in, you know, some people are blessed to understand what motivates them and what really truly, as they say, make your heart sing when they're younger. But for me, it took a while. You know, I, when I graduated from college, I was, I was in a time where women were just getting an opportunity to be something in the business world beyond um, more administrative. Um, so to me, I think that it took those three, the convergence of those three pretty dramatic events to wake me up to, and then eventually form Third Act Quest more at, as you think about it. I mean, I was starting my third act. So as I look back over the things that had meant the most to me in my life, they were around, um, and I had historically, you know, over bits of time put together groups of women. Um, I started a little angel network. I had some women, uh, female business owner support organizations. And I was always, you know, organizing groups of friends and other women to do things um, in various ways. So that was the little bit of the thread and um, the realization about life's end zone and the realization of the pure, um, sort of gratitude I held at that point in time for my life and the basic parts of my life sort of all converged. And I started to explore um, actually researching a lot of um, women. Um, I, I, I don't want to say not men, but it, I primarily was researching women who were leading really engaged, joyful third acts. So in the course of that, I started to um, imagine, and I'm, I'm leading up to that, in probably in the next year to feature um, stories right. about women who are embracing their third act in beautiful ways. So the first step was the formation of third act quest, which really has historically just been about, or not just been about, but has been about focusing on working with groups of women and helping them, you know, as I say, sort of discard and understand their limiting beliefs and, zero in on the passions that may have been buried over their midlife when so many of us are occupied with, you know, parenting or um, jobs and things like that, that are very, very challenging and to reimagine their paths forward and to look at aging in a much more, um, in a much more optimistic and exciting way as, in, as opposed to the fear and dread that, most of us do. So that's a long, long answer to a relatively simple question, but it, I hope that's helped you understand oh, a little bit absolutely. of my motivation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I was just thinking while you were speaking that there are a lot of women who are younger than 60 who yeah. are already on their yes. fourth careers or fifth careers or, you know, the things that they've gone through these days. These are, these are interesting times that we live in. Well, you, you hit the nail on the head too. I mean, Age does not define what I would call a third act. A third act to me is, and you know, some people might call it a fourth or fifth act. It's, you know, it's not a technicality, but for me, um, I look at you know, youth, the middle of your life, your midlife, where you're typically building and building and building a, a career or a path, maybe taking some pivots. Um, but if you're blessed with a, with a good relationship and a family, you build a family, it's, it's, a, it's a different time. And, and for many, signaled by empty nesting is, you know, a little bit of a wake-up call. And for others that don't have children, it's um, other types of realization, as I say, at the end zone. You know, there is an end to our lives. And at the end of it, we all seek to be able to reflect on some sort of impact or some sort of meaning in the world. Right. But, um, but your point too is that this time, oh my Lord, this time is, I keep saying to my daughter who's in college, this is a defining moment in your life. It's not only a, a really bothersome inconvenience for you, it's a really 
defining moment, you will reflect back and realize how much resilience you built, how much strength and understanding of, of what's important to you. And, and she's starting to see it actually now, but um, you're right. So a lot of people are questioning, you know, what it is they want out of their lives right now. Which is a, a fantastic point you make because it leads us right into my next question, which is what do you consider to be a third act or how would you define that? And I think you partially already answered that. Yeah, I think to me it is a time at which, I don't want to say you hit a wall, but I think it's a time at which there's a great realization that what you've been doing, although there's value to everything that we do in our lives, whether or not we do it again exactly the same way, but what we're doing is not what we want to be doing for the rest of our lives. And probably for me, most importantly, as I mentioned before, I didn't, I, I appreciate supporting and, and being a part of a business and helping it, helping it succeed. I mean, that's really makes me feel good. But in the end, my desire, like many people's, is to have an impact that's a little bit different and a little bit more interpersonal, a little bit more profound. And so I think that that most people do get to a place where they see that and they they analyze, they look back and they look forward and they say, okay, it, I need to change it. Um, and I have to say many people, because they're so busy in their midlife, it's less of a realization of what they want to do next, but a more of like, oh my gosh, this isn't it. What's next? What, what is next for me? It There's has to be, be something, something more. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you, you have a very impressive virtual event um, series starting next week on the 28th and for four consecutive evenings. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's called The Gifts of Your Third Act. And so what was your inspiration for putting together this kind of series? I decided at the very beginning of, of this that I really wanted to feature um, people that were inspirational. Now, I mentioned before, I want to do a bunch of, um, I, I'd love to ideally have a series of some sort, whether it be written or podcast or something like that, but about inspiring people that are living the kinds of third acts that um, lives that will positively inspire. Because you, we've seen, thank goodness, a little less, less ageism um, in the media, um, you know, with movies about Ruth Bader Ginsburg or other women that are not, you know, just in their, you know, 20s, 30s and 40s. Um, so there's a little bit of, of more awareness, but I want there to be, um, my vision in, in, in for this event is really about featuring people that can inspire people to think a little bit differently about aging. Mm -hmm. And instead of dreading it, can embrace it and feel that there are not just possibilities. So the reason I wanted to pull together this event was to gather together people that I've discovered over um, time, both in my, my friends and network group um, or in the research that I did in the field of ageism and anti-ageism. In fact, one of the women, Ashton Applewhite, has you know spoken on the TED stage and on the floor of the UN about the importance of us all um, being in touch with. I mean, there are a lot of isms right now, and ageism is one that has been a bit ignored over the years. So I wanted to find people that would be um, passionate, knowledgeable, wise and um, excited about sharing their, their ideas in a venue that um, now is um, Zoom because of our, of our pandemic, of course, but at the same time, I'm trying to maximize Zoom's technologies to allow people to have interaction. So it's gonna be a, a sort of, as I said, sort of like gonna be a TED talk where you get invited to the stage at the end of a presentation from a speaker to actually engage, sort of like we're engaging now, you can engage with the speakers. Um, so I've, I've gone on and on. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, not I, at all. I was just gonna ask you, what, you know, tell us a bit more about the program and you know, who's it for? You have um, 20 speakers, is that right? 20 speakers lined up for this program? 
Exactly. So tell us a bit about them and the topics that they're going to cover. Okay. So the event is, takes place over four nights. Um, the intention is to offer a variety of different topics, everything from um, embracing and understanding the fact that your, your body and your mind is aging, but at the same time, not fearing it. I mean, um, I mentioned Ashton Applewhite, who's that keynote speaker at the very first kickoff night. Um, she's giving actually a brand new talk of hers that um, she has, uh, there was some research back in February that said that Alzheimer's is, is in many cases a result of, I would just use a layman's term, giving up and being um, concerned and stressed about um, aging versus um, embracing their lives. So there's the negative values uh, of stress. So that's, that's taking a more uplifting um, message than I just conveyed. But so the first night will be that we will talk also about things. Um, and actually, um, Gina Vild, who is a, um, a Wellesley resident, will be a, a speaker on the Wednesday night of our program. And she is a, a gifted author and um, experienced leader in healthcare and, and in business. And she will talk to us about, um, about um, building your resilience muscle and coping with times like this of, of, of challenge, but also in general with the change that happens as, as we age. Um, there'll be a panel on Tuesday night and Thursday night, I have two panels. One is a panel of amazing um, transformational leaders who are gonna talk about um, their own third act stories. They're gonna share you know, when and how they decided to reinvent their careers and shift. Um, and then on the final night, this is an interesting one, I think for a lot of people, is it's called Intergenerational um, Alchemy and mentorship, mutual mentorship. So in a nutshell, that is about um, how we need to look at crossing the, the generational divide and, and having relationships with our adult children that are different from when they were young, and also having relationships across generations that are, that are beautiful and meaningful on both sides in the community and, and in business as well. So, and that's, and that's such an interesting concept because I think a hundred years ago, it was sort of taken for granted that you would have these um, intergenerational shares mm -hmm. and that's sort of um, become very sparse and diluted over the, the course of history as we know it. And it's, it's interesting to um, go back and reevaluate the value of that intergenerational sharing process. Ultimately, if, if I had a magic wand, what I would have some impact in uh -huh. with my business, not just this event, but future events and the work that I do with Third Act Quest is to shift, have a really meaningful um, impact and shift the way people perceive aging both those that are doing the aging and older and those that are younger mm -hmm. um, to really galvanize and pull people together and just realize how much we can learn from each other. And I think that there are many cultures where that um, relationship is much different from here in, in the U.S. So I think we have a long way to go, but I think that there's a lot of, I think there's bubbling interest on both sides and I'm hoping that we can galvanize and connect people better. So that's, that, you know, what you hit on is exactly at my core what, what I wish for in the world. So. Lovely. And, and what, was your, what was your process for asking these speakers to participate in your program? <laughs> Do you well, go online and say, oh, that looks like an interesting person. I'm going to give them a call. Well, or like so many things about this business development that I've, this, this entity that I've created, I use the term synchronicity because I don't know if everyone believes in it, but for me, um, it's always been important in my life that when I feel, as I said to someone, I know I'm on the right path when people and ideas and things just sort of line up in front of me. And so in each of these cases, I would discover, like in the case of Ashton Applewhite, who's the, the first night, I discovered her 
TED Talk, which was quite popular and really impressive. And I reached, I just said, well, I'm going to reach out to her. And I did. And she was willing to come. And the important thing I will also say about this is that these speakers are doing this at no cost, at no fee, um, because they're passionate about what they're doing. So that is also the blessing of virtual, is that um, if you have to hire speakers, it costs you quite a different amount of money. So anyway, so I, I discovered her, but in the other cases, people came to me. They heard somehow, either they saw my LinkedIn profile and we had gone to college together, you know, God knows, 35, 40 years ago, and we connected. In the case of two of the other participant speakers, um, we were um, not really close, close in college, but they discovered what I was doing and wanted to be a part of it. So it was all over the map, absolutely all over the map, and very exciting in the process. <laughs> That's excellent to find speakers who are passionate oh. about what they're, what they're speaking about. And, and when the stars align, you know, that's when, when it, everything aligns. So you can't beat it. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for them to be able to share. And I'm also really excited for the format because it's going to be, as I say, it's not intended to be the teacher student kind of a model. It's intended to be a group talking circle. So the attendees are actually open, you know, that will allow at least 30 minutes at the end of the presentation, not for the typical Q and A you do on zoom where you type it into the little chat box, but okay. to really allow for um, different opinions, um, stories and sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I had neglected to mention is that I have a group of um, other types of uh, other amazing people who are going to run breakout sessions after the presentations. And these sessions are gonna be part learning, part experience. You know, one's a writing experience, one's a photography experience. A couple, uh, one is about a fitness program that is extremely unique um, that, that he will share with us. So those will be um, interesting. And I will, I will promise people they've not, never done a lot of the things that they'll do. <laughs> You know, online before. So it's, it's going to be. Interesting. That sounds awesome. You've got like a, a full life package yeah, in you. this series, like all the things, all the tools that people need yeah. to, to, you know, go through the next phase of their lives. Well, I don't know that we'll give them all the tools. I, my hope is just to inspire and, and be a break from, oh my gosh, as I say, having an event at this time is either the is a combination of being the best and the worst of times, really. There's so much noise, there's so much angst, there's so many layers of stress. So I'm hoping it's sort of a break from the stress. Even on Tuesday night, I know it's right before the debate. So that's, you know, I'm hoping people will just feel refreshed and oh, I, I, think they, listen, you know? I think you timed it perfectly. I think after the photography and fitness session, they'll be ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For and, meditation, and one is talking about pivoting your thinking through meditation. I think that will be necessary. You know, like I said, all the tools one needs. Yes. Thank for you. The, for the next few months of getting through this time. Yes. yes. Um, and so what is, what is your next, um, what's your next act after this? What's your next uh, virtual event? What's next for you? So um, what's next for me is I'm focusing on in sort of, Two parallel track, a, a parallel track, and one I'm going to, I'm launching my next um, group uh, workshop. I, four times a year, I run a program called Living Forward, um, and it, people can do it on their own online because it's now an online course since we can't meet in person. So people can do it on their own, or um, I have groups that go through this together. I do that four times a year. So that launches in the middle of October. Then I plan to have a lovely time with my daughter home from college as I plan for another workshop in the spring. But more importantly, and I'm so excited, um, I don't know the exact date, but probably in March, I want to have um, either a multi-day or a long day series of storytellers um, people who are in their third act living really interesting lives. So one of the things I want to be doing is discovering people. Mm -hmm. So if anyone in your audience um, knows people 
um, I tend to say there'll be 60 plus that are leading. They don't have to be, you know, solving world hunger, but just leading a really beautifully engaged life that would love to tell their story of reinvention. Um, I just want to have that. I, I, I'm very excited about doing that. Next. Awesome. Thank you. Sounds exciting. So I'm gonna, we're going to put the link um, at the bottom of this video so people can register and there's still time between yeah. now and when it starts. And I wanted to ask you if someone misses the first night, the, the 28th, but yeah. then wants to register for the next three sessions, is that, is that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Any time they can do one or all four. Yes. Great. So there are two ways they can be involved um, or participate. Um, Primarily, I wanted to make this accessible to as many people as possible. So there, there's free registration. So you can register for free. And then you don't get to do the breakout sessions and the interactive component. You get, to, you get to watch one of them, the way the technology works. So it'll be live streamed through Facebook. So I can't show right. both at the same right. time. Yeah. Um, then um, there is an... Uh, what I call all access um, registration mm -hmm. that is a relatively nominal fee where people can um, be in the zoom meeting and right. be in the conversations and take part in the breakouts. And I'll, they'll also be given the recording. So, you know, if they sign up for the all access, they, they can at the end of the event, watch all four, they can watch them twice if they want, or they can watch the ones they missed. Right. Oh, perfect. Well, that you've set that up really, really efficiently. That really works. Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. I really try to answer everybody's needs. I know we're all busy and we're all sort of zoomed out, right. but yeah. I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping it'll be enjoyable. It'll forever. be great. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm uh, definitely um, happy to spread the word and very excited to, to see how this pans out. So thank uh, you so much for joining us. This has been such a pleasure. Rama, it's the pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much. Take care. Awesome. Thank you.